I can't believe that I'm on line right now and I literally just woke up. <laughs> but you get to see my 12 year old self and what I look like without absolutely no makeup um, early in the morning. I just wanted to come up really fast. I say that all the time, but I had to. I haven't been on here for a while uh, covering anything that has to do with the full moon and I thought that this was like the perfect time to do so. The full moon is totally in Leo right now, um, or technically it was at 7.30 Eastern time. Um, so hi, gorgeous. Um, so grand rising, everybody. Um, I just wanted to tell you guys about this. If you actually take a really cool app, it's called Sky Tonight, and um, you download it, you can actually uh, surf your skies with it, which is pretty cool. Um, it has the ability to kind of tell you where certain planets are. And if you live here in Arizona, literally, dude, like you can see everything. Um, when I come home from work, I literally stargaze naturally. It's just something that I love to do. Um, and I have been seeing Jupiter and the moon kind of playing together a lot, um, as well as uh, Venus is rising all the time in the morning. It's really, really cool. Um, so if you do live here in Arizona, you do have such an amazing opportunity to view so many planets um, using that app. And so that brings to the next point. Um, Sky Tonight will show you that actually the sun is in Aquarius right now. Um, and any time for those that don't know that there is a full moon, it's going to be where the moon is actually opposite on a 180 degree of the sun. And um, they're basically, they're looking at each other directly. What this brings up on a more emotional level is it's pretty much the sun shining light in the elements of how it is placed, um, where it is placed on the moon um, and shining it fully so that way you can open up about the emotions of where that moon is located as far as the sign and then also as well as the house that is located in your birth chart. Now, the coolest thing that I've also seen is that now that I've been discovering more of Vedic astrology, uh, Vedic astrology has showcased a lot more detail. And for those that know me and see me like at my job or those that know me from just like childhood or those that just know me from life, you know, I'm obsessed with detail. I'm definitely heavily um, hit with my Virgo and my chart. I have a ton of earth compared to what I thought I had a ton of air when I was um, following Western astrology. So that being said, when you look at it from the, the perspective of that, it actually is showing you that, um, you know, you have the sun that's shining the energy of Aquarius onto the moon. That is more about Leo. Um, and therefore, what you're kind of seeing is the elements of Aquarius sun, which really stands for the um, the ego being in the center of um, humanity and understanding what human causes are really trying to express. Um, also looking at the fact that the sun is expression and that the full moon is also going to be in Leo, which is ruled by the sun. So there's a lot of energy of expression right now, especially that has to do with humanitarian causes, things that have to do with um, connecting entities together and seeing how we all relate um, and not necessarily separating each and every one of us, but also looking at it from a perspective of how every single one of us also is our own version of larger expression. So it's about hearing thy neighbors and really being able to process the information of what they're talking about um, and seeing them in their shining light and not taking away their shining light, but realizing that we all stand tall together. And as a greater voice is really what's going to bring a louder difference. And I think it's so cool, which is actually the inspiration that made me come on here, is the fact that um, we have Saturn really close to our sun right now. And I just found this out, not because I actually looked at a, um, I, I never can say this name correctly, but a, a um, you meferit, you mer, is I can't say the word, excuse me morning burp. Sorry, guys. I can't say the word at all, but it's spelled um, E-P-H-E-M-E-R-I-S, I believe, but it's basically like the full-on scientific map of where all the planets are located in the sky at this very moment, as well as you can also look at other dates like your, your born date, 
um, as well as event dates to see kind of where the planets were located. Um, so anyway, I didn't look at that. I actually just took my Sky Tonight app because I got a really uh, awesome text message from one of my closest friends, Patrick, in the morning, um, sending me full moon in Virgo. And I was like, actually, friend, it's a full moon in Leo. And it's mainly because um, Western astrology has definitely taken the concepts of, um, you know, the concepts of uh, the constellations and more so broke it up into a seasonal viewing. And that's where we're getting the difference between the two concepts of astrology, um, which is Western, which I still respect, but I think it's more in a psychological view and it can be diluted and nobody can tell me anything different because I've done the research on it. Um, whereas Eastern is really going into the deeper realms of it, breaking each sign up into what's called nakshakras, and then breaking those nakshakras up into padas. And so you have 12 different versions of a sign, which explains why no Leo or no Virgo are exactly the same. And it gets really detailed into it. And then looking at your moon chart is actually more... Um, prevalent and more excitable in the culture of Vedic astrology because it really taps into what our mind sees things as, which is a whole nother level of understanding how transits work. So even when you're looking out into how the full moon is actually, um, you know, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Wow, just lost my train of thought. Um, connecting to you or affecting, that's the word I was looking for. Um, even when you're looking at how it's affecting you, really from looking at your moon chart is really how you get an understanding of how it really connects. And so um, when I actually went to timesofindia.com and I was able to look at a little bit more of an understanding of a horoscope, it really helped me understand from the perspective of me being a Capricorn rising, which is my Vedic um, astrology um, ascendant, and then also looking at what my moon, which is a Chandra Lagna, that is going to be my moon being um, in Chitra, is um, in Virgo. You take that um, that moon in Chitra or whatever your moon is, and you put that as your first house, and then you see your Chandra Lagna, which is going to be like your full-on moon chart. That also defines what your transits are. And if you get deeper into Vedic astrology, um, you'll start to see what's called um, Mahadashas and Artadashas, which really gets onto time periods of your life. And trust me, it sounds very complex and one thing that I can say which I'm so glad that I am saying in a full full face of no makeup waking up in the early rising you know looking at the sun out loud and really being able to process the information and being proud in my expression is this things that mean something things that really carry their weight are gonna be complex they're gonna be detailed they're going to be deep they're going to have a depth that you're going to have to dive into when things are surfaced and it's barely scratching the surface of that it's very microwavable it's quick information um the best uh way that i can explain this i actually heard this from a podcast um from do the work uh, with Sabrina Zohar, but she was expressing that you have microwavable relationships um, and then you have crockpot relationships. And I feel like it's the same thing when it comes to information. You have, you know, your microwavable information that's fast, quick, and doesn't really dive into detail. It's very Gemini energy. Um, and not, not coming for Geminis, but just showing you like it's energy that is a little bit of the buzz. But then when you get into more Sagittarius, which is the opposite, ironically, um, you know, that 180 degrees similar to the sun and the moon um, at a full moon stance, it's like Sagittarius will dive into the information. It'll really get um, almost submerged into it and really process it. It wants to go to the horse's mouth and receive the information. And so when you're looking at really good information, that is more crockpot energy. You know, it takes time to really process it. It takes long studies. It takes long observation. And there's more respect along the way for it because when someone challenges it, that's when that Aquarius energy truly kicks in where you can explain every angle of it because you've truly studied it as a scientist of nature. Um, and we're all scientists. And that really brings me back into what my point is for this full moon is that we are in an experiment together and every single one of us in our Leo energy are really representing that character on stage that really has the, you know, the ability to present itself and present whatever that character represents in its very nature. And because all of us have these storylines that are so special and so complex, it really gives us the ability to conjoin them together and figure out together. Hi, love. How are you? It really gives us the ability to, um, 
to form that information together and be able to create something that's a fuller story that everyone can relate to. And so it is coming to me in source um, to share this message that a lot of us are going through individual things right now of trying to learn how to get closer to our expression, trying to learn how to really focus on what makes us important, focus on what makes us special and how to present ourselves to the world and how to be a part of the greater humanity. And a lot of times we have to remind ourselves that it is in our true complexity, it is in our true nature of being who we are and no one different that really makes us stand out to being that full character that we are designed here to be. And that in itself is such a refreshing thing that you can give the world. Please don't ever shy away from who you are. You are a part of the tribe. You are a part of the greater ecosystem just as you are and by you being anything different is actually something that will take away from what this ecosystem represents as because you're supposed to be who you are you're supposed to be who you are with all the things that you have within you you know sometimes we have to have a talking to ourselves because we come from these backgrounds of you know very complicated childhoods or complicated um, clubs that we might have been involved in or organizations that might have swayed us from really representing who we truly are and we can miss elements of the greatness of ourselves because we hide those elements of ourselves because we want to be a part of the tribe and in reality you're already a part of it in reality who you are and your special pieces of what makes you beautiful is actually what <clears throat> will join the crowd even better. And it is the missing piece. It is that void that you're trying to fill in. Um, so I want to share this part with you. And it's a little bit deeper. But again, we've already talked about depth is the fact that whenever you're hiding something within yourself, it usually comes from somewhere in your life where you've had to hide an element of yourself before because there was fear of showcasing it and it made you stand out. And in many ways, you possibly could have also almost, I want to say like, challenged or created a competition for people in your arena that may not have known how to accept those areas of themselves. Hi, Skylar. <laughs> this is his morning hello. Um, but they may have not been able to accept those areas of themselves. And because of that, you've learned to almost shun this special part of yourself. And in that hiding is actually what has now manifested into this version of yourself where you're trying to connect with the world by continuously hiding that part of yourself. And then you're filling you're feeling almost like there is a void. And then we start to look for that same thing that we're almost hiding from ourselves or we are hiding from ourselves in other people to bring that back out of us when in reality it was already there. It was already so prominent and so potent. And it's almost like you're introducing yourself to so many different variations of people in this world to get that part of you back. So the very thing that you're looking for is you. The very thing that you're looking for in others and organizations and places of connection is everything that you've already had, but maybe parts of yourself that you denied in the process of trying to be connected to other people and being accepted and being given a stamp of approval. Well, friend, I'm here to tell you that this full moon in Aquarius, um, I'm sorry, full moon in Leo with sun in Aquarius looking at it. Um, that happened at 730 this morning, Easter time. So um, for us here Mountain Standard or Central, however you want to put it, depending on where you are, um, it was going to be at 5.30 um, in the morning, which will be very potent to um, be around for lingering for some time. There's a lot of emphasis on being um, disciplined in your expression, especially because the sun is so close to Saturn and it's looking at us. And like I said, I can see that in the app. All I did was pull up the Sky Tonight app. I, I shined the light on the sun, saw it was in Aquarius, and I'm like, yep, just like I expected. Western astrology is reporting um, that we have our full moon in Virgo, which means that the sun would be in Pisces. And right now, with it being the 24th, we're in that cusp series of what they consider for, um, you know, Western astrology. But in reality, um, we are right now still in Aquarius sun and it can be, you know, seen in scientific apps. So that just proves it. Um, but the point is, is that being that Saturn, once I shined it, um, once I shined the app right onto uh, the sun, I saw Saturn was so close. And so I know from studying um, astrology that 
you know, when it comes to astronomy purposes of Saturn being so close to the sun, even though there's this beauty of expression, there's also this discipline that comes with it. And the discipline can be what you make it, right? Saturn is not a planet that is trying to harm us and trying to keep us quiet. Saturn wants discipline. Saturn wants structure. And so with having two of the planets, even though, you know, the sun has that Saturn energy that's right next to it, it's still shining light on the moon that's in Leo. So there's so much energy towards expression, so much energy towards that, you know, really bringing out who you are and what you're truly feeling. And yes, be disciplined, but be disciplined in a way of where you're not shut, shutting yourself up and shunning your light, but you're actually being disciplined about what you really want to say. You're being courteous to yourself. You're actually saying to yourself, I don't want to restrict my expression to where it turns into where now I'm coming out in this, you know, rebellious Aquarian way. But I want to give myself discipline to the sense of maybe I need to write out my expression before I really want to get it out to the people that I want to talk to. Maybe I want to revisit these conversations within itself before I want to open them to the world. Connect with it because I don't think and I'm and I'm learning since I found out so much about Saturn because I am Saturn ruled in my um my rising sign um of being a Shravana rising. You know, really when it comes to Saturn, Saturn just wants you to be disciplined enough, let's say with Shravana for example, with the Nakshatra of Shravana, Saturn wants me to listen. Saturn wants me to hear things around me and be disciplined enough to not just go off the bat with what I think I know, but also process information at a level where I can realize how much I don't know and I can learn from it and take that grandfather energy from Saturn and apply it into really for myself first. But then when I go and connect to other people, I also take that responsibility of saying, okay, I'm going to, you know, connect with what this person's saying. I'm going to have discipline for myself enough to not be, you know, the main rising energy in this conversation, but to process this information, to also allow myself to um, not necessarily just think I know and just go with what I think and and just completely funnel the information that this person is giving me only by what I think I know, um, but really shutting down the energies of what I think I know to receive more good energy. And then when I have my time to process it and process it steadily, you know, process it with Saturn energy over time, letting it marinate, not having this microwavable experience and really just like appreciating the information. And that is not anything bad. That's not something poor. And because of it, this is why I can say with Saturn dominated um, or Saturn ruled energy of like my rising sign, which is one of the, the if not the most important sign that you have, especially um, conjoining the energy of like the moon and the sun. It's not Saturn is not trying to punish us. Saturn is trying to um, humble us and make us realize that, you know, at the end of the day, Saturn is servant energy and all of us are here to serve each other and to love each other. And this is why with Saturn being so connected to the sun in Aquarius, looking at um, the Leo um, moon, it's about expression, yes, but it's also about serving humanity and serving our neighbors around us with listening to each other, with embracing each other's expression, with allowing each other to be on stage and being able to connect with each other at every level so we can have a greater voice together once we truly truly process the information. Um, now, don't clock me. I did do a quick search before I got on here, but my understanding is that um, Saturn is, I'm um, sorry, the um, the moon in Leo is also in Maga. And Maga is the Nakshatra. So for those that are new to Vedic, um, I just want to be that opening stage to you. And this is just me going off of intuitive feeling. So please um, do not clock me with this. Again, I just looked at the fact that Saturn was super, super close to the sun. But um, it's actually interesting because my Saturn is um, in Maga, in my uh, Divisional 9 chart, my Navamsa. And that's our progressional chart in um, Vedic. And so I definitely can connect to this heavy because Maga energy um, is really about being able to be royal energy and coming from the Petris. And the Petris are basically the energies that are on the other side that are family members that are in your lineage that are pushing you on this planet right now to basically correct karmas and things that were not yet corrected um, for themselves and for others. And so 
Um, what I would try to say is because we're all connected to this energy and it's so weird that this is coming in at this time because it makes perfect sense. But I always said to myself when I was looking at the Petri energy, um, is the fact that like all of us are connected. We do have, um, our own, I guess, lineages that come from the different gods that are expressed in Hinduism. If you want to go far back, or if you are Christian and you have that connection of Adam and Eve and how we're all coming from that element, but point blank period, we're all coming from greater elements and are, you know, standing, um, I want to say standing ovations, but in a way, yes, standing ovations of, um, those particular entities in the future. And when I say standing ovations, it's because we are created from the hands and they are clapping for us. Um, they're clapping for us to continue lineages and um, information that has been left for us to continue those pathways. And so when I think of full moon being in Leo and MAGA, um, it really presents this information to me almost as if, you know, we're supposed to really stand for humanity and for the team of the Petries connecting past information with current information and how these storylines heavily connect and continue in cycles. And so the easiest way to explain this is how trends continue to um, represent themselves, how, you know, now, you know, what um, we're seeing in the curly, <laughs> curly perms and everything that was once in one time frame are coming back in this time frame or how, you know, there's certain elements of language that is coming back um, from past um, instances. And so when we think of that in a, in a larger way, um, I feel like having the full moon in MAGA is really being able to express how we are still a part of this greater humanity and how our voices are really connecting to the expressional values of what was in past life, just as much of how they show up um, in modern day life um, in this time frame. And it's still speaking to the same cycles of energy, the same things that we have not corrected in our karmas yet as a greater uh, humanity. Things that are going on right now in culture, that's going right now in community, that's extending out into you know the world, and how all of us are speaking the same exact language on how it is portraying, going from crazy, from atoms and molecules all the way out to stretching on how it connects to outside into our planet, to other planets, and etc. So really looking at how if you look, you know, let's say at an eye and you look through an eye, you can go all the way down to its very molecules and then extend outward and see that same image of what the eye looks like in the creation of how, you know, uh, space looks like. And so we are speaking the same exact language when it comes to what things mean for us and how to show up in the world and how we could all connect and join hands on very important factors that are extremely important in every culture, in every society, um, in every, you know, uh, financial status of whether you consider yourself to be, you know, a one percenter or you consider yourself to be somebody that, um, you know, is struggling with their finances. We're all still under the same root of survival and we're still all trying to speak the same language when it comes to keeping our uh, next of kins, you know, and our kins beyond that of what they're creating even safe and surviving. Um, does that mean that this, you know, I know this probably triggered some people like they don't have the same problems that we have. And it's like, maybe you don't know because you haven't been able to listen and you haven't been able to um, connect hands on a humanitarian level. And obviously, I'm going to keep it real, those that disconnect and they want to completely go in solitude and just disassociate away from society, you know, they have their time and their, you know, emphasis on being separate. And they they also, um, you know, in the light of God, in the light of the Lord, in the light of all the Lords, depending on what culture you represent, um, they are a part of nature and they too are going to be worked on um, as far as karma and as far as um, correcting things that are wrong. And, you know, none of us really have that ability to slap anybody on the hand because we all at our own levels have created, um, you know, some form of dishonesty. We've all at um, ourselves on some type of level have created cruelty. And many of us even have killed a bug, you know, um, created some form of an act of, um, 
you know, doing something as, as, as low as taking a life or taking some type of energy away um, and merging it with even your own when it comes to food. So there's so many different elements of how you can look at it. And again, this doesn't take away any wrongs that have happened. That's not my point of this conversation. But what I'm saying is from an objective level, from an Aquarian level, even at that, um, there are different ways to look at things when you separate yourself from the emotion of it. Leo, and you put yourself on the outside of it and you actually listen more than speak or process more than um, judge, you know, and that's really what this Aquarian uh, slash Leo energy is about. It's about the expression, but it's also about being disciplined and listening as well and um, connecting the dots between past energy to, uh, you know, modern energy and really being a, a grander voice for everybody. Um, but doing it with class and doing it with the concepts of understand that we are all serving each other as a greater humanity um, in order to really, truly, truly value the ability to stand out as a greater expression for ourselves. Um, so in layman's terms, if you want to be heard, you have to listen. Um, so yeah. That's really what uh, I wanted to come on here and say. I hope this is helpful. There's a lot of information. It went by so fast and I'm so, so, so freaking grateful because all I could think in my head was, oh my God, I got to get to work, but I really want to be able to indulge in this energy and be able to leave a message up here because I just feel like this morning with my own reflection and things that I really wanted to connect to, it really challenged me and you know, one of the things that I want to share really fast is that I have a very hard time sometimes coming from, um, you know, my childhood where I'm a talker, I have ADHD, um, I'm very expressionist, and there's sometimes even um, I find people because I have that very hypersensitivity that are not ready for the conversation with me because I go so freaking deep into things, but I am my own version of a scientist in life getting messages from people that say, wow, you've helped me with this. Wow, you should continue with your messages. Your videos are so interesting. You know, they're so powerful or they've helped me in this way or even seeing likes. It really does help me keep going because a lot of times when I sit home at night, I'm fearful of the fact that I'm not touching people's ears and that I'm not um, you know, that I'm coming off more as like an Instagram influencer wanting the, the buzz, which is not what I'm in this for. It's really about being able to spread the information that I found um, passion in and something that has helped me. And, you know, I've gone back and forth, you know, in this um, because of the fact that like when I get home at night, truly, um, and if those that, you know, want to take the time to study a little bit of Nick Chakras or know a little Nick Chakra information, I'm a mega Shira rising when it comes to my divisional nine chart, my Navasma, and studying so much information on people that have really taken the time to delve in, people like Claire Nocti, if you go onto um, YouTube, and she makes like these uh, cinema versions of like, um, or cinematic, um, you know, videos that are so powerful of how she breaks up culture today and how she um, breaks up, you know, celeb understanding, not necessarily to create this like, you know, praise towards celebrities, but because they're so well known that their lives are pretty much on camera. So she can kind of bring up fascinating points about them and how even in their work, how like even in like certain actors and actresses, how they might have a certain placement in their chart and it showcases in their work so heavily, so prevalent, uh, prevalently, ooh, can't say that too fast. Um, and so how a lot of these actors or models or singers might have similar styles of expression in their songs or in their writing or in their films that all connect to these, these Nick chakras that they're so, um, they have such prevalence in their birth charts and it's wild. And so, um, Megashira for me really has to do with, um, connecting to a lot of like Genesis concepts or Adam and Eve and Lilith. And for those that have like really followed me along the way, I have been so heavily into the story of Lilith and I find it so fascinating. And so it's interesting because as I'm watching this, it's hitting the areas of myself where I'm realizing that I'm not alone when it comes to searching this um, you know, fascinating and complex world of astrology and how it ties into even when you step out of um, Western culture, it ties into even like 
Hinduism and, um, you know, if you only obviously go but so far, even some Buddhist understanding. And I'm sure when I search Chinese astrology, it'll connect to their culture. And there's even um, different versions of like African astrology and connecting to that nature. And so like there's so many versions of it. And I think that when we get out of the element of ironically psychological astrology, which is very Western, which we are very psychological in Western nature, um, we start to get into how science and spirituality actually connect. And so when we think of astronomy, which is the study of the planets, and how it turns into astrology, which is the study of the planets and how it affects society on the planet, how it affects, you know, nature on the planet, not even just with humans, but society, including the entire ecosystem, animals and you know, humans and how they connect and all of us are connected to the stars and, you know, as above, so below. And when you start to see how it all connects, because you have now, you know, separated from this understanding, this just four walls of just psychology, and now you're stepping into science and spirituality, conjoining to, you know, have a baby and have information really connect. And that is when it, life was just truly so powerful. And so the reason why I brought up um, the mega share energy is because a lot of times, you know, I find paradise or I find, you know, my dream state and my true um, meditative state to be when I come home and I just delve into this information. And, you know, I love surrounding myself with these elements of like nature and plants and just harmonious energy and like meditative music and it's like this calming energy and if you look into Megashera, you know Claire Nocti um what I was mentioning on YouTube really talks about how Megashera energy is that tie between the garden of Eden energy to like um you know that uh Ardra energy that Rudra energy that really is like that fast-paced life and ironically I have um you know Ardra right parallel in my chart in um, Jupiter. It's Jupiter in Arja and it's in the sixth house, which is every day. So it's like so much information going out into the world. Um, having Rahu in my second house, um, yet I relocated. So it's activated in my third house right now in Arizona. I am a salesperson and all this information of Arja is coming out into the world. And it's like, it's, it's hitting the areas of my birth chart where it's, it's allowing me to have financial pluses from it you know, having goals and being able to make them and et cetera. But when I come home, darling, that Megashara is strong. It's wanting to connect and just dive into this beautiful world of just nature and calming sounds and puppy smiles and all the things that have really been able to give me access to true, true what love means to me. And so I, I say all of this because I woke up in the morning and I was like, oh my God, I have so much that I want to do and I have so much I want to share and I just hope it's reaching um, the loving energies of others and I just had to go deep and I had to go deep and I had to go deep and I'm like, Suki, just because you don't get enough likes or just because you um, are not getting enough hits on your video doesn't mean that your video and your content is not important. It doesn't mean that um, you know, you're know you not helping people around the world, even just helping one uh, like my friend Patrick, thank you so much to my friend Patrick, by the way, we had a beautiful conversation last night about it. And, um, you know, it, it helps me really understand just because you're helping one person is enough. And, um, ironically, Patrick just like loved one of my images. So I, I hope he gets to see this. I will make sure that I tag him, um, when I write the caption, but, um, I just want to say like, that's what it's all about. It's about, talking to friends and talking to loved ones that really share an understanding of what means something to you and how you can express yourself truly to the world because you are a part of the tribe. You are a part of greater humanity. And if I didn't have people like Patrick or friends like, you know, my friend Tamara that I talked to the other day about, you know, things that I was concerned with or my friend Diamond that I talked to, my friend Sherwell that I talked to and so many friends of mine um, that I connect to on a loving level that will dive into that paradise with me, you know, lose time and really just vibe and not be so strict about um, our Druid things that <laughs> are related to Rahu energy, if you get deep into Vedic, um, and really just blend into what uh, life is when we're all conjoined together, when we're all, you know, holding hands. Um, life is just so beautiful and they just remind you that your expression truly matters and 
you know, they remind you to be disciplined about it and to really um, make the video or make the cookies. I'm laughing because it reminds me of Tamara. Um, make the cookies and, you know, get prepared for the things that you really want in life and get your schedules together and get your, you know, your taxes together. I have another friend that's trying to get that done and just, you know, have those friendships that you can really um, connect to this energy and be heard, of course, but also be the friend that listens and also be uh, the friend that connects the dots for the other friend. And so you can truly evolve together into a greater light. Um so, so much energy, so much information, um, but there is an element of just naturalness to this video. Um, I wanted to come up and you guys can see, like, this is my playful energy. There is no part of me that is trying to hide myself into this, and you're seeing me early rising. Um, you're seeing me at 10.10 right now, uh, which I do have to go, and I have to go put on my makeup on because I have work to get to, but... I just wanted to share this because I needed to get on here and I needed to uh, root for myself again in the elements of who I am. I talk a lot that is who I am, but the information is out there and it's at your time frame and when you want to hear it. And that's what's beautiful about it. And if these videos are doing well for you, if even if you forget to like, even if you forget to comment, you know, which I would love, but still um, message me if they're connective. Um, I would love to hear from you because I want you to be able to voice what you feel and for me to allow myself to lend an ear for me to listen. So thank you so much, friends, and I hope you have a beautiful Saturday. Happy full moon in Leo um, and have a, a beautiful time expressing yourself and also listening. Okay, enjoy. Bye, guys. <laughs>